modern radar, uh, we can determine where a tornado is about 10 minutes before it strikes. That's plateaued in about the last decade, meaning our radars haven't gotten any better at determining that early signature. My name is Jamie Jacob. I'm a professor of aerospace engineering at Oklahoma State University. One of the things we'd like to be able to do is have UAVs fly in developing thunderstorms to figure out, well, why does one supercell form a tornado when another one does not? Our UAV that we're designing will carry numerous drop sons on board. So as it's flying in areas of interest, it'll be able to drop out little payloads that measures all those important meteorological parameters. And it looks like a mess. To most people, we call it a paintball plot. But that's uh, seven different computer models and their forecast of uh, thunderstorms or convection over the Gulf of Mexico. And you see some bright colors here, and I can mouse over those. And this was an event back on um, April 3rd, widespread severe weather across from Texas all the way up into the Ohio Valley. And you can see that the model actually began indicating the potential uh, for this severe weather event or outbreak seven days in advance. So dealing with this enormous amount of information is one of the bigger challenges uh, that we face in meteorology. We have a lot of data. The question is, can we exploit that and pull out some information from that that is useful? One of the revolutionary aspects in, in forecasting in recent decades has been the use of ensemble models. So it used to be uh, with limited computer power, you could only really run a, a one or two simulations a day of what the atmosphere was going to do. And also, for the first time, meteorologists have at their disposal the ability to understand whether the atmosphere is in a regime that is predictable or one in which it's rather unpredictable. And that's really based on, on how the ensembles agree or disagree as you go out in time. In terms of search and rescue, one of the things that we want to be able to do is uh, allow UAVs to assist the first responders in finding survivors. This is an idea of what the final model will look like. It's made out of a carbon fiber, so that way it's uh, heat resistant, uh, it's more rugged. That means flying closely overhead with infrared uh, video that provides that directly back to the searchers so they can find um, people trapped in the rubble while at the same time being quiet so that the way the searchers can listen for the sounds of the victims. Mm -hmm.